what transpired in Renil Basel meeting. 100,000 for May Day. Two countries vie for Lankan presidency favours, AKD on MP crossovers. Sajith's miscue leads to embarrassment for SJB. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Prorti Pelagasma. What transpired in Renil Basel meeting? The talk of the town in the past week was the meeting between President Renil Wickremesinghe and SLPP founder Basil Rajapaksa for the third time since the latter's arrival from the United States. It was a quite crucial one because the previous two meetings ended inconclusively. According to political sources, Basil asked Ranil to make a public announcement after he spoke about his intention to contest the presidential polls. I will announce it in June or July, or else there will be opposition to the ongoing welfare programmes. Also, the international recognition that the country is free from bankruptcy is due in end June. Until then, the welfare programmes will continue. That will be my election campaign, Ranil explained. When asked if he is contesting from an alliance, the incumbent president said he will be an independent candidate. That will allow anyone to support me even from the outside, he said. Basil seemed unimpressed when Ranil noted that people do not have much faith in political parties anymore. The SLPP founder said a decision whether to support him would be made in consultation with the party. Until his announcement comes, the party will refrain from saying whom it will support, he added. Ranil said he raised that with Mahinda Rajapaksa too, Further, he gave an explanation on the dates for the elections. Despite any form of agreement to be reached between these two, Namal Rajapaksa is leading a campaign within the party that they should field their own candidate. He has declared in public that the ballot paper will definitely have the lotus bud symbol. In the event the UNP and the SJB join forces, the SLPP should field its candidate, he insists, although it is unclear if he himself wants to be that candidate. It seems Damika Pereira is to be promoted again as their candidate. Taking note of Namal's insistent line, Damika is going around the country with his DP education initiative and meeting students and people. A big event happened in Matara on Sunday. More than 1,000 children, their parents and others warmly welcomed him on arrival. There was big applause when Damika claimed that he united the politically divided country through education. 100,000 for May Day. All parties and alliances are planning to show their strength on May Day. The SJB will bring a crowd of 100,000 to Colombo to mark the day, says its General Secretary Ranjith Maduma Bandara. The JVP-led NPP is planning a similar gathering in Colombo, in addition to three others in outstations. The SLPP and the UMP too say they will bring more than 100,000 each to mark Labour Day. Looks like Colombo will not be big enough to put all these crowds in. Also, how many buses will be needed to transport them to Colombo from across the country? The UMP is trying to steal the limelight with its claim that several SJB MPs will go on its stage, but it is not going to be so easy. Last Sunday's Anida newspaper carried a banner headline which said Ranil's May Day plans were a failure. Ravi Karunanayake too is playing a key role. Last Friday, several SJB MPs were at his Kote residence. Ranil came too. They chatted for a couple of hours. Without reaching a final decision, they accompanied Ravi K to a media party at Kobawaka in Horana. Present, there were Rajitha Senarathne, Patali Ranawaka, Dilith Jayawira and Ashu Marasinghe, among others. Two countries vie for Lankan presidency favours. The upcoming presidential polls are bringing world attention to Sri Lanka. The past week saw a delegation from China's Communist Party in the island, holding talks with political party leaders. India is said to be the leading source of pressure to parties and politicians over the election, especially to the SLPP. That country's top envoy Santosh Jha met with SLPP founder Basil on Friday. In a post on X, the Indian High Commission in Colombo said cordial discussions between them focused on topics of mutual interest, including political developments. The New Delhi government believes Basel to be their most trusted political ally here in the island. 
According to speculation-making rounds, India's raw defence chiefs as well as powerful politicians are giving instructions to our political parties. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval has had meetings with AKD, Namal and others. Most recently he met with Melinda Moragoda too. India doesn't like China getting closer to Sri Lanka and intensifies its pressure on Colombo, it is said. In the meantime, Chinese Communist Party's international department, Vice Minister Sun Haiyan, had discussions with mainstream parties. They included SJB's Sajith Premadasa, NPP's Anura Kumara Di Sanayake, UNP's Ruwan Wardena, and Sagala Ratnayaka, as well as SLPP's Namal Rajapaksa. According to sources, at her meeting with the SLPP, the Chinese vice minister had remarked the party has become strong again. The leader TV has been saying that India is influencing the voters in the north, east and plantations. At the same time, China is having its effect on the SLPP and the Wimal Wirawansa faction. Critics say interventions by these two countries have intensified the 2024 presidential race. We may elect the president, but either China or India will be telling us who it should be. AKD on MP crossovers. National People's Power leader Anura Kumara Disanayaka is presently on tour in Sweden where he received a warm welcome on arrival. At a public meeting yesterday in Stockholm, he strongly criticised the present regime. He claimed the price of a parliamentarian who would join the government for privileges and portfolios is 500 million rupees. He said they join the government in return for bar permits and state land. Ranil and Mahinda traded accusations of being the thief. Aluth Gamagai said he cannot sleep until Ranil is sent behind bars over the central bank fraud. Now, all these thieves have come together to govern. Shouldn't this politics be halted? he asked. Sajith's miscue leads to embarrassment for SJB. There is talk that Sajith Premadasa is a little ahead presently. Critics deny it, however, saying it looks so because AKD's campaign has become a little lethargic. Last week, Sajith was humiliated after he spoke against a proposal, which the House had adopted with his support. He has been saying that a foolish decision by the government has adversely impacted the reviving tourism industry. He said the visa fee has been raised from $20 to $35 for visitors from Sark countries. For other countries, it has gone up to more than $100, he said. As a result, Red Wings has halted its flights that were to bring 800 Russian tourists per week. Sajith observed at a Sakvala smart classroom programme. This came up in Parliament on the 26th. Minister Harin Fernando said the Cabinet agreed to grant free visas for seven countries in order for tourism development. A committee has been appointed to decide on extending that facility to 60 more countries, Harin said, in a detailed response to a question raised by the opposition leader. Chief Opposition, Whip Lakshman Kiriela, rose up and inquired as to when that was approved by Parliament. Minister Tiran Alice replied that it was adopted in agreement between the government and the opposition. He noted that the advisory committee discussed it on 21st of November 2023. Parliament passed it on the 23rd of November without a vote and was gazetted on the 27th. Video. As Tiran was replying, other ruling MPs mocked the opposition. They cannot remember a proposal they supported, and what will happen if it gains power? asked Mahindananda. One cannot agree first, vote in favour and then go out and criticise it. But this is all politics for power, anything can happen, that's it for today.